Well, hello and welcome to the Middle Age Man Talk Podcast on May 2-4 weekend. If you don't know what that is, you might be an American. It's the 24th of May. It's the Queen's birthday. If we yep. don't get the holiday, we'll all run away. Also, it's the traditional start of camping season in Canada. Um, and all the public toilets will be open this weekend. Yep. <laughs> and so growing up in the 90s, and it still is a big deal for a lot of people, May 2-4 weekend was the weekend you went and bought a 2-4 of beer and went camping. There's... There's 24 days in May 2-4 and 24 beers in me. Is that a problem, officer? <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the weekend that the... Um, Drunk driving's bad. Yeah, the uh, park wardens hated this weekend. Yeah, because the, all the parks get trash, man. This and, is good. This is this is not beer. This is kombucha. Richard's homemade honey kombucha. Yep. This is good. Made with black tea and just... The uh, no, no, so not a fancy tea, just the uh, red rose orange pico. Red rose, we are we are with, really with, Canadian tonight with a raspberry thriller for flavor. A raspberry thriller, where's my lime, Ricky? I'm drinking a rum and coke. You might be wondering, where's Bacardi, the beer? And, and this is camping rum because it's Bacardi's. Bacardi, Bacardi it needs to be Bacardi. Is that actually rum and coke, or is it like a rum and like? No, it's, it's ro- rum and it's coke. Proper coke. Yes, proper coke. You've uh, you've moved up in the world now, buying your brand name colas, as opposed to my RC cola. Your RC cola. You know what RC cola? It's is close enough if you're mixing rum. Yep. Um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, normally we have beer on the show, um, but I uh, left the bag with beer and chips and ice packs. In my house. So, uh, there you go. That's, uh, that's how it is. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be good. That's fine. We'll save it for later. Yep. There'll be more podcasts. Um, so tonight's topic is, tonight's topic is... So there's just been, been this thing going all around on the internet causing real kerfuffle. Everything you need to know about bears? It's a question that got posed on a forum, a sort of a, a survey type thing. But what's the question? This is for women. What would you? Ra- who would you rather run into in the woods, a man or a bear? Oh, a man, because some man in the woods is just going for a hike. A bear will eat you, or at the very least, maul you. The overwhelming response was the bear. What kind of bear? This doesn't. It's not specified. Like this kind of big bear? No, 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 no. Not, not, not a hairy gay guy. I mean, I'm not gay, but I, you know. If I wanted to be gay, I would be a bear. And I would only want to be if I actually was that way, which I'm not. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, Seinfeld, remember? No, but um, I'm I'm 100% a bear. So. But I'm not gay. This is an interesting <laughs> thing because. What are we talking about? So, the, oh, oh, so, 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 so women are asked that this, when these dumb hypothetical questions. This, this, this is pub talk. For, this is pub bollocks talk. And they're asking women, oh, if you were out in the woods by yourself hiking, would you rather run into a wild it, bear it was or a, a regular man? I'm not even sure where the, for, where the question was first asked, but this is I've seen this on Facebook. I've seen it on, on uh, Twitter. I've seen it on I'm all the social the medias. Is your wife coming in? She's like, actually, we need a woman for this. We need a woman. <laughs> and you'll do. Come on in. Come over here. Come on, camera. We, the mic's here. You gotta be near the mic. At least come here, and then you can yell at the mic. Yeah. I just like cameras. We'll just stand here and yell at the mic. Come on, Stephanie. Because you're gonna sound like I'm far away. Yes, our we're local celebrity. Yeah, there she is. That's the girl on Middle Age Man Talk. <laughs> oh, good. You can't see my head. That's right. It's it's like you're like the like the the, the peanuts parents. That's mm-hmm. 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 The, t- the teacher. So, there we go. There she is. So, as, as we were talking about, we just started the show. So it's about bears. The question, you know, would you rather, who would you rather meet in the woods, a man or a bear? Just a random man or a random bear? An actual bear, not a gay man who's, you know, looks like me. It's a stupid question. It is a stupid question. It is pub bollocks. But on the internet, many women said they would rather meet a bear, a wild bear that'll eat them, as opposed to a regular man for some... Well. Feminista reason? Is that why? Well, the thing is, is that, you know, one of the, one of the things I saw, one of the reasons that I saw given was, at least at least with a bear, <sighs> Yes. I know what he's going to do. 
No, you don't. Animals are unpredictable. That's what they're called, wild animals. Yep. They might be full, might be hungry. If it's one of those bears eat so, fish, it doesn't care about I them. understand where the bear, choice of the bear comes from. Um, with, you know, disturbing statistics, like, you know, three or four women at some point were sexually assaulted in their in their lives. Yeah, but how, how did, like, where do those stats come from? Is that true? I will go find four women and bring them back. That would and then be you great. can ask them about this bear question. Hi, we've just met. We're on the internet. Also, we were wondering if you could divulge your... They will be typical women. So then you would get a straight answer to the question, which you won't a get answer? from me. I like a gay answer, straight answer. I won't answer this question. I, th- I think I would, I would rather run into a man... See, my take is I'd rather run into, into a, a human. Bear. I'd rather run into a bear because I'm in the woods to avoid people. Stephanie's laughing. She's just like, you guys, I'm sorry I came out here. I regret <laughs> popping in on the podcast. This mistake. I made a mistake. <laughs> I was waiting to slam the directly off for team time yeah. and not cut it off where you would be oh, reading a, a comment a, that you were making. A climax, suspense with a door slam. Any second now. Yeah, like like in a plot climax. She's whispering climax at me. Your wife whispered climax at me. Uh, she's fun. She likes she likes jokes. I like I like, I think your wife's all right. Yeah, no, the the the, the rates are. Um, See, the thing so is, so one out of so th- this is you know um, from. But but what about the whole like the um. There, there's that bias. We've joked about it before, but like some of the initial studies and how many people are actually homosexuals, but they ask outside of like gay bars. So it's like if I'm outside the synagogue, what's your faith? Jewish. 100% of all people surveyed were Jewish. It's like, well, who who did these stats? What is the actual um, credibility of these studies? So I have been seeing these stats. It used to be one in six, not one in six. So it used to be... Um... It was a lot lower, but then the thing is that they changed. It used to be just raped or attempted rape. Um, but ha- but they- sexual assault includes groping and... Farting too loudly. No, but, and- but it, it, it includes groping and, you know, uh, the, you know, preventing a, a girl from, you know, sort of the... the um, yeah, it's um, the masher. Th- you know, the, the 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 you know, putting your arms around a girl to to prevent her from leaving. You know, while you talk to her. You know, right, right, right. Um, kind of the. I don't understand that. I mean, I know I'm good at talking to people, but I always found that if you just talk to girls, uh, enough of them, eventually one is going to be like, "I'll spend time with you." You know, you know what I mean? Like it's like it's it's a numbers game. It's sales. No, it is, and that's the thing is that um, all dating is, is sales. The number of guys who have been sexually assaulted is astoundingly high. Now, are they sexually assaulted by other men or other women or both? Both. Ah, see, women are just as bad as men. Because we're all equal. Women are equal to men, and they're just as terrible as men are. They can. Women, women and men suck equally, because that's what's equitable and fair. Yeah. And There's the thing a mosquito is, in here, and I need to kill it. Yeah. I was going to say, most we kill of, mosquitoes. Most of the sexual assaults are actually against children. That's really disturbing. Yeah. But... The... So, but back, back to the bear in the woods thing. That there, there's a certain mindset now that I would rather have to like throw a bear bomb or bear mace or shoot a bear with a gun. Well, than that, have that was to... what someone else said: is that I can shoot a bear with no consequence if it attacks me with no consequences. Yes, if a human shoots a bear with a gun and you tell the park ranger, "I shot a bear. I I felt threatened." Well, okay, what do you do? But if you shoot a human, so yeah. um, I mean, you know, you know what the, the problem is though, is that people don't look at things. Uh, accurately, you know, it's interesting. I'm a big, tall, large, imposing man. I am, and it took me a long time to realize that I'm threatening. I didn't actually understand that I was threatening. Um, and there was a really interesting study done recently. I was watching on a podcast, I forget who did it or where, and I don't know how well the study was done, but they basically had a bunch of like dudes, a bunch of guys, and they put them all together, you know, and, and they got them after the fact. Can you rate, um, you know, how threatening you think all the other men were. Like, who was the most threatening guy or whatever, right? They put all that together as, you know, who's the most, you know, man of the group. And then they got women, I guess, to observe these guys or whatever recordings, however they they did it. And the women had to rate them, who's the most attractive? Who's the, you know, whatever. And what they found was, for, like, females being, women being attracted to men, you might actually do better 
if you're more threatening as opposed to pretty boy or handsome. So what was interesting about this for me is that I'm actually better looking than I thought I was. So the reason for that is because I'm threatening. One of the things that women scary. look scary. One of the things that women look for in a guy is someone who they can think can protect them from other guys. Oh, another everything. Um, but uh, so 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 here's the thing though, where I was going with this. I didn't realize I was threatening. And part of the reason is people are always afraid of someone if you don't know their purpose, right? Because think about it. If it was the woman, you know, like the, the female jogger, when she sees me out for my morning walk, it's like, oh my God, this actually happened to me with a friend of my mom's so who's my neighborhood years ago. And I was like, oh, hey. And she's like, ah, and then she saw my cute little like, you know, dog with a curly tail. Yes, I have a dog with a curly tail. And she, I was like, oh, it's, you know, someone, you know, I'm Brendan. And she's like, Oh, I was at your wedding. Oh, hi. How's your wife? Uh, good. Thank you. But like for that second, when she saw, you know, me, I don't look great in the morning. I get up and go uh, out the door with the dog. I don't look amazing. But th there's that fear. But once I had my like my cute little dog and then one of my kids when they're little, so you have a little child in tow, women are way warmer to me, like way more friendly because, oh, clearly he's not a threat. He's a dad walking the kid, walking the dog. And it is interesting how men are perceived as these uh, I guess we are predators in a way. I mean, it's well, the of, thing is, there's there is a in, in the whole non, hunter gatherer way. Well, also in the in a non uh, negligible number of men are untrustworthy around women. It isn't it, the thing is, is it, not all men. I'm, I'm going I'm to say that. I'm going to say not all men. However, there is no. We don't actually have a label across our forehead that says safe. Stay away. Well, the, well there's even some guys who. They may not go looking for it, but they, I forget who the podcaster, she talks about this. Given the opportunity? If, if, well, even if they're like happily normal married guys, um, especially if they're, they're, if they're younger guys, like under 30, if they're offered sex by a woman, like this isn't like, they, like they're not trying to do anything wrong, they're not doing anything bad, but if a, but a woman offers them sex and they're in a relationship, they'll probably go for it just because access to sex is so like built into men that they'll just kind of, well, I was offered sex, so I had sex. It would be rude not to accept it. Um, and there's a certain percentage. Have you ever told no to a girl about sex? Um, I did I... in college several times because I, like, I had a girlfriend or I didn't want to sleep with that girl. And, dude, they are really mean about it. They're, like, amazed. And I'm like, here's the thing. I don't want your AIDS. Um, <laughs> See, for me, I just ran away the two, two times that it happened to me. Oh, one time a girl got pushy with me at a party. And then I said mean things. And then apparently she cried. And people were like, you were mean to her. I told her I had a girlfriend and she didn't back off. What am I supposed to do? Like take her outside and knock her down the stairs and feed her to a bear? Like, no, I just like No, you're supposed to tell your girlfriend and have your girlfriend take care of her. She wasn't at the party. <laughs> um I was I was usually a designated driver though, so the thing was Come though, back to come back to my place and I'll introduce you to my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> that was a Conan O'Brien moment. Um no, but but the thing is though, like it, it, it is interesting how, like, if women basically throw themselves at a guy and, you know, it, it's like, well, that's what she wanted or she's allowed to do what she well, wants. This, but, if, but if guys are so open with women, it's like, well, I didn't want that. Why would he do that to me? It's like people are allowed to approach each other in society. Sorry. Yeah. That's that's life. Um, You have to take no. You should. Anyone should take no for an answer. There's a few physical realities that has to be taken into account. One, guys have the advantage of testosterone, which makes them even... Pound for pound stronger than women. Yes. Do you hear that, hey, Internet? Hundred... Women and men are different, Internet. Yes. Freak out. Lose your minds. Uh, a 150 pound... All, th all other things being equal, training and that sort of stuff, a 150 pound man is going to be stronger than a 150 pound woman. Yeah. Did you hear that thing recently? It was really funny. It was... um. I don't know who the guy is. I think he's a, I guess he has money or he's on, on the internet or something. Um, cause, I, cause like I got someone else like reacting to it. I got to get off YouTube shorts. It's like, it's like TikTok, but you know, um, YouTube, I like, I, I love YouTube. Everyone loves YouTube anyway. And this guy was basically talking about how it was, um, the WNBA championship team. Okay, great. You know, it's the women's uh, professional basketball. And, um, this guy made some snarky remark that saying, oh, yeah, you know what? I bet, like, um, a high school boys championship team or no, a state championship high school team could beat the women's championship WNBA, excuse me, WNBA team. That is a burpee kombucha. I apologize. Anyway, so he said, so, and and then, like, this sort of this NBA player was, just, or WNBA player, she fired back, and he's like, I tell you what, like, I'm rich. I'll put my money where my mouth is, right? 
Um, I get to pick the state championship high, high school boys team uh, to play you. And um, if they lose, if you guys beat them fair and square, I will give you guys a million dollars to pre- do whatever you want. you the championship team, million bucks, whatever. Or if they beat you, you had to give me a million dollars and I will disperse it to the boys on that team for whatever they, you know, their college or who knows. Anyway, there was no response after that. Like, there was no like, sure, challenge on, challenge accepted, which kind well, of... Well, the thing is, is the, the, in that case... It's, a, it's a little bit... She doesn't have a million dollars to disperse. Probably not. Um, and she can't speak for the rest of the team. There's management but, but she, involved. But she, she could have been like... Like I'm up for it if the you know W the, the coach approves or what like but there could have been like however we could we for could soccer them. in Canada for football for um, European football yes um, you have to say it right say football 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 <laughs> say it right um, are, our our really... gold, our our our, uh, <laughs> our Olymp- <laughs> Olympic women's team yeah regularly practices with university men's teams. Okay. Because they're about the same level. Sure. So the best women players in the country are about the same layer level as your average uh, men's university team. Men's university team. That sounds about right. No, these girls, these ladies are amazing soccer players. Oh, no doubt. But they, they lose as often as they win. Well, it's a lot of teams. It's soccer. That's yeah. yeah. Um, but it's it's the uh, and they, but they have to because they're they're enough higher than they can't. They have, there's no other women's team that they could women's yeah, teams they can practice against. It, there was an NBA player, and he was talking about how he actually thought some women from the WNBA, if they'd had the right training, if they even had like five years of good training, they could. Some of them actually could play. Could be a co-ed league, but you're going to see a lot fewer women in it. But there are some women. Because the, 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 here's here's the thing you ever notice in professional sports, and people have looked at this for I think like hockey and baseball, but well, you, hockey actually doesn't have in Canadian Canadian American yeah, hockey there's, there's the not, NFL. There is actually no requirement that you for you to be a male. Well, there's been the odd woman in the AHL, but what I was going to say was is that all these the, 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 the birth dates in the AHL, there's a disproportionate amount of time when your birth date is. It's because you were older when you started your school year than your peers by so many months, even six months, nine months, right? Whatever the intakes are, which means you're that much bigger, stronger. Well, you make the top tier team in, you know, grade four or five. Then you get the best coach in grade four or five. They didn't, then work. You, they, they didn't work for me. I but, failed they, grade three. Well, whatever. <laughs> but the, 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 the point is, though, is that back. <laughs> on the whole, then you get to that better team with better coaching. Then you get to the next better team, the next better coaching. You get a better competitive league. So if if the top female athlete, the top of the top female athletes got the same coaching, the same quality of coaching and training as the best boys teams, there is a percentage of them could, that actually could do it. That's what this NBA player was saying. Um uh, broadly speaking, but he's saying like it, it would be really tough initially. Also, um, in his opinion, the way the game is played is differently. Men play it differently than women, so there's a certain style difference there. So you have to figure that out. But the, the whole the whole thing with, with sports is kind of tricky. But back to the question, I thought of a variation of it. You said the whole like so it's like random, you know, female hiker jogger, and it's like is it, is it some is a random man or random bear in the woods? What if it was your daughter? <laughs> Because that's dick, yeah. For, 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 and like, what would you rather? Probably random man. Um, because well, think about it. who who's the random guy in the woods? It's some dude going for a hike. It's probably not a you know rapist murderer. Or it could be some homeless guy who is just trying to avoid everybody. Blah, blah, blah. Don't steal my thoughts. I won't. Have a good day. <laughs> um, but your daughter wouldn't be alone. She with friends. She well, no, be- my my daughter is often alone in the woods. Please don't say where. I don't want this podcast to be like, at these coordinates, she'll be alone. <laughs> no, no, Richard, don't divulge. But, 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 well, she knows how to handle herself in the woods, though. And she's about 100 pounds soaking wet. Yeah, she's not, she's not huge. Um, but she does know karate. And if... Most martial arts is, 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 is bullshit, okay? It's, it's all bullshit. She's, she also can fence, so she can handle a sword. Does she have a sword? So she can have... That's... How, what with the double entendre? Oh, she knows how to handle a sword, if you know what I mean. You mean actual metal swords? Yes. Oh, oh, yes. literally. Okay. Like 
This is a really terrible episode, isn't it? We're just like, I mean, it's great, but it's terrible. <laughs> it's like Donald Trump. He he says terrible things, but they're hilarious. Yeah, so. <laughs> Could you imagine if Donald Trump was a beekeeper? I was at my bee meeting last night for the local bee club. And we were talking, I don't know how we got onto this at, at the end of the meeting, like just four or five of us. And we're like, can you imagine Donald Trump, if he's a beekeeper? Got the biggest, hugest bees. Our bees are huge. They're bigger than everyone else's bees. Everyone's talking about our bees. <laughs> All the other beekeepers come up to me and say, how did you get such big bees? How do your bees get so big? How do they fly so fast? They fly above all the rest. <laughs> so Shane Gillis, who does a really great impression of Trump, he says it's easy. You just have to get the intonation to do this with your hands. Because I was doing it last night. I don't do a great Trump. And, like, everyone was cracking up. It was, like, huge bees, the best bees, president of the bees. My uncle. And my uncle knows bees. My uncle knows bees. My uncle, my cousin, my sister, my gay aunt. We all know bees. My gay aunt has the gayest bees. Gayer than all the other bees. They're the best gay bees. Everyone comes from miles around to see how gay her bees are. Can bees be gay? They're all female, except for the drones. No, I don't. I don't think bees... I, I don't think they do insects not, are the same as, as, as mammals. They don't pair. No, they don't pair. And they don't um, reproduce for pleasure. Well, all the boys can reproduce and only the queens can reproduce with boys from other hives. So this is, we've really gone off track here. So you never answered the question. So your, we, your, your daughter's in the woods. She comes around the corner. It's either like a, a, a bear or a regular man. I'd rather the man. Because chances are a regular person in the woods, hello. Yeah. However, even if she was sexually assaulted, which would be awful, horrible, horrible. It's not great. She's more than likely going to survive. Yeah, if a bear mauls you, you're toast. So I was talking, I actually talked to my wife about So, so the question really is, what's worse? The, what, what, what would the risk be? I mean, it's hard to even, like, but, but basically... Potential, probably low potential of sexual assault or probable death. Or, 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 and or, actually, the thing is, is that statistically, the, the, pers- the, the reason why there are more women who are sexually assaulted by men than there are people killed by bears is not because bears are... There's more men and women together in Yeah, there's, there's a lot more interaction between men and women right. than there is between people and bears. Um, if you had... The bear population being 50% of the human population. And you were encountering them all the time, like yes. every day. Yes. Then we would have a heck of a lot more bear deaths than we have sexual assaults. Yes, there would be a lot of people shooting bears. Um, well, and that's the other things you can shoot bears. So you, can... I, I, you, know what, I, you know what I think the actual takeaway is but here? It's, is it's... when we asked your wife... Uh, and she said, that's a stupid question. It is a stupid question. I, I think her wisdom, that female wisdom, kind of rings true. Though my wife was like, you know, uh, she, uh, she's like, I was, I was watching this thing the other day about how to survive a bear attack. And she's like, you know, it's like the, you just curl up and you know, cover your neck. I'm like, that doesn't work for black bears. That doesn't if, work for all bears. That works for certain situations. Yeah, it works for certain situations. So it's, if it's brown, lay down, cover your neck. Right. That sort of grizzly grizzly bears tend to be territorial. If it's We're black, not... fight back. Because black bears, they tend to just stay away from you anyway. I've heard it's actually the teenage black bears are the worst because they're more curious. Whereas grown-up black bears are more like, that could be another predator. They smell funny. I'm going to stay away from yep. them. Because I, I, I got a buddy from years ago from college. He did a lot of... Um, like he had all the courses and the certs for like, we're talking like proper middle of nowhere camping, like really in the bush. And he'd go do this and he'd sometimes see a blackie bear and want to get a picture. And as soon as they go, hmm, and they just take off, you know, because they're like, I don't want anything to do with you. But the teenage bears, apparently, so I was told, they're a little more curious. They're not as afraid of people or a new thing. So they want to sniff you and play with you. Not necessarily to eat you, but they might very well end up. Hurting you or eating you or well, the thing is, black bears generally, um, if they attack you, it's probably because they're hungry. They're hungry, or they feel really threatened, or they got cubs, or who knows. Well, the thing is, the cubs in that sort of situation, you can usually just back away. Um, that's or if you're moving quickly and they see you, but you keep going away from the cubs, but you don't know where they are. It's the if they attack you, black bears generally, if they attack you, it's because they want to eat you. 
Oh. If they actually attack you instead of just doing bluff charges and that sort of stuff. Because that's, right. what, that's what a, a mother bear will do. And they don't kill you first. Oh, they play with you. No, they don't even play with you. you just start. They just start eating you. So if you play dead... They'll just go and start eating They're your guts. They're playing with their food. So that's like when like those like monkeys eat the smaller monkeys and they just catch them and rip them apart and eat them. Yes. And they're like screaming. They're like, whatever. Yep. You know what's actually interesting about bears? They go for the testicles first. Like a lot of predators, because that's where the minerals are. I didn't realize this. Uh, a lot of minerals go to your testicles. Fun fact. So ladies, if you have a low mineral content and you need... <laughs> So, uh oh! I was gonna say they don't. The ladies don't have testicles. No, I was making a. a Most double, of them don't. I was, I was, I was making an inappropriate sexual joke about <laughs> about third base. <laughs> That's third base, right? That sounds right. It doesn't matter. I don't want to have to make this an explicit content video. Let's just move on. <laughs> uh, double entendres. So what are we? Uh, so, so, the, so what, the, what's, what's the resolution we have here? The We're resolution kind of the is that it is a, a dumb stupid que- question, stupid question, but it does illustrate that a large portion of our the female population are uncomfortable, at least are uncomfortable with random men, unknown men, strange men, stranger yes. men, stranger. So strange. So stranger danger, stra- stranger man danger. Because while well, stranger danger, this is actually this is the funniest thing about the whole stranger danger thing is that. When it was coined, yep, was at the was about the point where we it became the safest to be out on your own. Oh, interesting. The um, stranger dater was coined in the nineties. This was yeah. This was our childhood, and I was outside a lot. The nineties to two thousands to early two thousands was the lowest um stranger crime you know, stranger on stranger crime rates that we've ever seen in entire human history but w- well at least in our cultures um in like you know canada and the west yeah but what's um and what's interesting too is how now in like 20 25 years like even in like cities and like smaller neighborhoods kids don't walk to school anymore parents drop them off or they yeah. get a bus even though it's like four blocks and the thing is is that t- so, you and I walked to school or biked to school, didn't yes. we? I mean, you were country, but... I was country. I hated my bus driver, so I biked to you, school a lot. I, well, how did, why do you hate your bus driver? That's for another podcast. That's another podcast. There's, there's a whole story there. But but in any case, I had, so, so, so so where is this the, the, this modern stranger man danger that women feel? Where, where is it coming from? It was... Um, there was a bit... There's a, the whole stranger danger um, educational thing that was pushed to kids. But also, our entire society moved from a risk mitigation mindset right. to a risk avoidant mindset. Oh, that's interesting. So I A lot know- of it was pushed by insurance companies. Of course. But it used to be, oh, um there's a there, Don't get in a car with someone. Now it's I'll drive you to school. Yeah, it's the interesting. Um it's the uh it went from the going um telling your kids be safe to making sure they're safe or an example would be going from you know okay we're gonna go and po- post a sign say swim at your own risk and put a life preserver up at the same right. quarry which you see all around the swimming places around here to okay we're gonna go fence this quarry off oh i see that no one can go yeah right because like one one dummy might not read the sign so no one can enjoy this. So there is a quarry that I that uh, you're, you're just banging on, but no one cares about quarries. Let's wrap it up. Yeah, another episode. I got to wrap it up. Yeah, I like mean Brendan. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you for the kombucha, Richard. Do you want another one for the next show? Yes, I do. And that's a wrap. <laughs>